It's a fun job. Talking to our customers, uh, we believe, is uh, probably one of the finest jobs we have uh, here at Sprint. That customer's phone ringing off the wall. Who you gonna call? Service customer! Now they're taking care of one and all. Who you gonna call? Service customer! We've got uh, roughly 1,900 people across the country located in eight service centers who have just stood at the front door of the many problems that we experienced during the past year. He slimed me. That's great! Accessibility is a big quality indicator that has to do with the uh, number of customers that are able to get in to talk to a service representative in the uh, last quarter of the month or the year uh, 95 percent of our customers were able to get through promptly in fact we went two months where we did not have a blocked call that is from around September 15th to around November 15th the customer who called us on our 800 network and got into the network did not get blocked not one single customer on top of that and that's critical. If you're going to serve customers, the first thing you have to do is get them in the door. You have to be able to let them talk to you about whatever it is they need to know about. Can I help you? I don't have an appointment. I'd like to talk to someone, please. I'm Peter Vinkman. May I help you? Um, well, uh, I don't know. What I have to say may sound a little unusual. Well, it's all we get day in, day out around this place. But we can forecast now uh, with great reliability how many customers are going to call us day by day and if we know how many customers are going to call us then we know how many uh, service representatives we need to uh, have online to receive these incoming calls let's say this Twinkie represents the normal amount of psychokinetic energy in the New York area according to this morning sample it would be a Twinkie 35 feet long weighing approximately 600 pounds <coughs> That's a big Twinkie. This is where the service reps deserve all the credit in the world because they take call after call after call and uh, are able to maintain uh, uh, a wonderful, uh, interested and helpful personality in dealing with these customers, which is very important. We busted the customer service problem. Who are you going to call? Service buster!
you like Scottsdale so far? I think we really have a fun-filled and information-filled several days for you. Let me stay safe in the beginning how honored we are as the executive team to honor you for the achievements that you've made in 1988 and to be sure that we thank you for all of the things that you have done to help make us a success, to give us the platform so we can continue to meet the new challenges that we have before us in 1989. So thank you, and I hope you just have a marvelous time. We have a variety of goals that we hope we achieve by having you here. One, of course, is to celebrate your achievements. We hope that the successes of 88 have given us confidence to meet the challenges of 89 and 90, because even though we've achieved so much in 88, there is much, much more to do. We hope we provide to you key information from the top executives representing the key disciplines within the company so that you're more aware and have direct interface and are aware of the key issues before us. We hope that you will bring back, since you are the top achievers in your area and are respected for what you do and for the way you conduct yourself at business, that we hope that you will bring back many of the ideas and thoughts that you gain here so that you can help us spread the news and the information about where we're going. And lastly, we hope to reinforce the concept of team and team building. Where we are in our business cycle and our maturation is we now must move from the myopia of our individual departments to the teamwork between departments so that we drive to provide services in the eyes of the customer the way the customer wants them. The first speaker that I want to bring up this morning is Dave Ertel. Now, I hope you've all had a chance to see our, our TV ads that say, talk with the best and trying to get that theme across. That slogan tells our customers and those that we want to be our customers that Sprint has a commitment to quality and a commitment to be the best. This morning, though, talking with the best has an entirely different connotation to me. It means I have the privilege of talking with you, the best. The absolute best top performers of U.S. Sprint in 1988. And certainly my most sincere congratulations. You've succeeded in just about every job opportunity that my organization has to offer. You've played key roles in fixing the billing problems and eradicating, I like to use that word, eradicating the uh, code abuse that has plagued our industry, with the exception of, there was a real life phone card up on there on our video before. You know, <laughs> we hope we scratch that one. Right. You've kept customers with us through some incredibly difficult times. You've learned how to sparkle in your customer contacts, and you've changed the payment habits of our customers. And let me assure you that I'm not offering you just my congratulations, but that of the entire senior management team at U.S. Sprint. And in fact, just two weeks ago, I believe it was, that UTI had its board meeting. They talked a lot about us. You know, we turned the corner and made a buck 95, according to the records in the fourth quarter last year. The, the power and the feeling and the positiveness from all of the UTI stockholders was certainly fell all the way from California to where I was in New York at the time. They're very proud of us. Des despite the diversity of your jobs, you certainly are united in one thing, and that is being the best at what you do. Here at U.S. Sprint, we certainly have a quality network, and Fred's going to share some thoughts with you about that. We have innovative products, and Richard Smith will share some thoughts there. And we have a great vision for the future of the telecommunications industry. But most importantly, we have you. I really do believe you are the best of the best. Because that, and you've earned the right to be here, as Steve said, we want you truly to enjoy yourself here at Scottsville. Scottsdale. We want you, though, to leave here with not just with fond memories, though, but as some of the, uh, the activities you have this afternoon and tomorrow, that you have some things you take back to the job and that you do know you make one heck of a difference to all of us. And we also want to recognize that late nights, late dinners, missed dinners, Miss plane trips and lots of nights away from home are recognized by all of us, but they've led to the quality and the dedication of your work. Quality, though, is what I want to spend the few moments that I have with you to talk about today. You've heard that opening video, and it really was, I heard it for the, last, the first time last night, and I think I was whistling it for, for half the night last night. It really, it really caught the spirit. You've been through Focused 89, and you know that quality is the watchword here at U.S. Sprint. What does quality certainly mean? Really fundamental, it means satisfying our customers. And no arbitrary goal, no index, which we set for ourselves, 
will make U.S. Sprint that best telecommunications company in the world. It takes obvious commitment. One thing I've learned, though, is that the distinguished service provider in any business can command customer loyalty. As I share some thoughts with you a little bit later, maybe can command a higher price than we're able to charge in the marketplace today. You take a look at our network. We're certainly proud of that fiber optic network. We're certainly proud of the enhancements that we have done to it. Yes, we feel a pride that we own a technological advantage today in the marketplace with our network. But we also know the huge amount of resources that our competitors are applying to catch up, and certainly they're going to catch up quite soon. And it isn't just the glamour of that network, though, that is going to sell our customers and let those customers stay with us. On price, we have a price advantage today. It's one of those things where, although I don't want to have an advantage on price, if we were able to do the absolute quality job, if we were recognized as the IBMs or the Deltas or the Xeroxes of our business, we don't have to discount our rates in order to get that business. So then certainly the key is if we will not have for long the technological advantage and we don't want that price advantage, the only place I see where we have to excel, should excel, must excel, is that area of customer satisfaction and there's no reason that we can't satisfy our customers. Those systems problems and those accessibility problems that have plagued us in the past are fundamentally gone today. I am going to run through those, some highlights, some success stories for, for this last year. But remember, those internal measurements are only valuable at all if they re make us reflect on our ways of satisfying the customer. We've talked a lot about billing. I know last year a lot of the questions, probably a lot of the negative questions, were about billing. And in terms of billing, we've looked at it through quality eyes, through customer eyes, through completeness, timeliness, and accuracy. And through any way you want to look at it, we have made very, very steady progress month after month after month in 1988. And it certainly took all aspects of U.S. Sprint to do that. Externally, I think there's three areas where I'm asked the most to comment on, either through our customers or through the analysts in the industry. Billing always turns out to be number one, our earnings, is certainly paramount on people's minds. And the last one is our customer service, which I'll talk about later. The power, though, of a quality measurement, looking through it through customer eyes, has come to light to me so much after Richard Smith and Fred Lawrence and I had a chance to visit with a group called the Gardner Group. You may not know who they are, but it's a key analytical force in the industry that helps guide very large customers as to who they should do business with. And a year ago, and so we certainly had a lot of problems to, to, to warrant their reviews, a year ago, they thought extremely poorly of us. Today, with our network, with our customer service, and our billing problems fundamentally behind us, they've given us our due. And I, I think one of the highlights just a couple weeks ago was, the, was a sale to Texaco. Uh, I received a call from, from Texaco uh, as a reference from the Gardner Group, and the questions really were, are our earnings for real? Are our billing problems behind us? Gardner Group had given, us, given them a recommendation and asked for a sanity check. After we had the discussion, they signed the contract for, I believe, all the payphone traffic and for some additional facilities with U.S. Sprint. So the power of a quality index and the power of the perception in the marketplace is only beginning to sink into me right now today. And when I talk about customers in the marketplace, though, I don't limit myself to just those that pay their bills to us. There's a whole set of customers that are internal. There's frontline employees and there are other. I'm other. Right? Many of us are other. Many of us must serve the person who serves that pain customer directly. I ask you over and over again as I'm out in the field and I talk with people, think about that. It's like if you're not serving a customer directly, go find someone is and do it right for them. Because otherwise there's a domino effect. Somewhere in the chain, if one of us doesn't do our job right to help out our colleague, then every time that end customer will not be served. To improve service, to satisfy our customers, to support all of our people, we have to have that uncompromising commitment to quality and uncompromising commitment to excellence. As I said to you before, too, we're going to take the time in 89 to ask our customers directly as to what's important to them. Up till now, I do believe, in my own world, we've had all the smarts we've said. We say we know what the customer wants, we know what quality is, and we try to find a way to measure it. That isn't necessarily true. We must take the time on the small end and the medium end, just as Richard does, Richard Smith does on the very high end, to find out what quality really is in their eyes. 
and then tune our measurements and tune our outside feedback through Walker to meet that. Once we hear that from our customers, the process that is ingrained in quality education is called root cause analysis. It's a very formal essence of quality training. It means taking a step back, finding out what's truly wrong, and again, eradicating the root problem. In, in customer services, I don't want to just add a whole bunch more reps to do the job better. I, I want to find out what turns off the customer and fix those problems, period, dead in the water that they never happen again. Talking about customer service for a moment, one philosophy, one bit of information, something that's been ingrained in me from Frank Blunt that we talked about before is those moments of truth. Do we walk like we talk? When, when, you're, when you're reps, when you are on the line with that customer, have your cassette skill trainings you know, stuck with you in an irate situation? Do you deliver that quality service to the internal customer time and time again knowing that it will have a very direct impact on the external customer? Those moments of truth leave a very, very lasting impression on our customer. Setting high expectations is something, though, that uh, I, I, I really enjoy. Now, sometimes I'm known pretty much as a hard guy, and we go through the, the um, uh, objective setting sessions for the next year, and somebody asks uh, or, or portrays they can do a 15% improvement, and the answer is, no, I want 50. You know, I'm not just being a smart ass about it. I'm trying to look through it through the customer eyes. Now, if we were giving the absolute best service that anyone provided today, no one would ask for a 50% improvement. But the fact is, we're not quite there in many dimensions, and so yes, we have set very, very high expectations. Another reason, I guess, not to set low expectations is I don't want anybody to, quote, just get by and meet an index and feel good, because you can't feel good until the customer really feels good. Quality again. I try to stress through this entire talk how much I believe in this attribute, and how much this can differentiate us in the marketplace. Again, the quality of our networks, our products, our systems, and most importantly, the service that you provide every single day is what I mean by quality. We say that U.S. Sprint's mission is to be the best telecommunications company in the world, but it's going to take an uncompromising commitment to quality to make that happen. Now look, you've also proved yourself by just your actions in 1988, and that's why you're a member of the Achievers Club. And so truthfully, we didn't bring you here. You brought us here to honor you. The senior team, or senior team in any business, really only has two things to share with its people from, from my perspective, and that's time and reward. If we walk like we talk, we spend our time with the business problems and with you directly, and then comes the reward for excellence. That's what I believe we're doing in these days, sure, in these moments with all of you. Your achievements have brought U.S. Sprint out of the morass of its difficulties and offer us the opportunity to join that select group of companies that are known as quality businesses in America. Your ability to meet this challenge has made me just swell up with pride. Working together, we've accomplished some pretty remarkable things. And working together, the future will absolutely be remarkable. Thank you very much. Our next guest this morning that I want to introduce is Richard Smith. International. You don't hear a lot about this, but we grew our revenue 90% versus 1987 to over $130 million. And you'll see some more incredible growth uh, this year. Introduce global phone, meaning you essentially call any phone in the world through Sprint. We increase our direct country services from 16 to 36. Uh, this means that we don't resell AT&T to get to those countries. We have our own lines that go to the countries. We have agreements with those countries. Uh, and the bottom line is you make money when you're sending traffic over direct served lines. Uh, you break even at best, perhaps lose, when you have to resell AT&T. Uh, the majority of our traffic is to direct served countries. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't take that many of the large countries like England and Germany to quickly get to the 80 or 90 percent level of your traffic. And we've done that. An international group under Bill Burgess really did a grand job. The people will make the difference with Sprint, both in terms of customer service and in terms of innovation. We've got to be quicker on our feet, more innovative, better to the customer. We're not as bureaucratic as AT&T. We've got to make sure we never become as bureaucratic as they are. We've got to make sure we always care more about the customer, that we have more enthusiasm, 
Uh, and enthusiasm is contagious. If you have it, the people next to you will have it. You have to preach it. It's a gospel. Uh, that we can do better and that we can always stay ahead of them on. It's my pleasure to next introduce Cliff Hall. FTS 2000 is a real success story, but especially for my organization. When EDS left, I can remember the morning I was in uh, Bob Snedeker's office, actually, and I was looking out the window. It was a Saturday, I think. And, uh, it was the afternoon because I was thinking, when is he going to let me go home? We were trying to decide what to do. And uh, he said, you know, you've had a couple months under your belt now. Aren't you guys ready to tackle this? And I said, sure, Bob, no problem. Piece of cake. Then I went home to my wife and I said, you know, I think I just made a career terminating decision. <laughs> we may want to pack up. Well, I think you know the results. We delivered an excellent proposal and design in a short time frame. And I think we made a significant contribution uh, to that uh, project. In fact, we have been nominated for something called a Smithsonian Award, which is an award, national award given for technical um, achievement by an IM group. And uh, part of the basis for that award is the design work that we did in the FTS 2000 project. So real success story. But we're also quick to remember that we could not have done it without the patience and the support and the input that we got not just from the groups within IAM, but from the rest of the company as well. And I asked a year ago when I talked to, I, I talked to this group and I talked to the NAD group and virtually every one of my discussions with you, I think you'll remember I ended by asking for your patience and your support and your input. And we couldn't have succeeded without that and I really want to thank you. Our next executive guest this morning is Scott Calabano. Quality really has to be our competitive edge as we look forward. It's nice to have uh, products and, and service and so forth, but if those things are not in the way that we personally buy our own, spend our own money and buy our own products and services in our daily life, we know who we go back to shop with again. We know who we wouldn't touch at all. The, uh, the AT&T ad that's, that uh, has just came out on the satisfaction guarantee, and you heard about that earlier, really has three facets to it. It's, not, it's, it's price, number one, is the first uh, clue you get when you read the article. But down further in the article, it, it's, it's also strengthening quality because they don't want their network to be construed as less than ours and of service. And they think that they can, uh, they can truly move ahead in service. We have to be on guard on that. We've got to be better. Um, as I was coming down here, I was reading articles on quality that, uh, that we circulate among ourselves, and I picked up one on Giant Foods. Giant Foods is a retailer, and if you lived in the Washington area, any of you from the Washington area would be familiar with Giant Foods, uh, with Gourmet Giant and so forth. They've really done, they're considered a leader in that industry relative to quality, and, and quality is so germane and so embedded to the organization. Let me give you a little uh, story that they, they talked about in the article, and this was that a, a checker, at the cash out, and all of us have uh, no, no uh, checkers, and maybe we were checkers in our past lives. They, uh, every night they have to reconcile their cash drawer with the checks and the cash and so forth, and so one of the checkers came up with a $9 discrepancy. And not peculiar, I mean, there's $9 discrepancies all along, and so that person took 45 minutes to figure out what was the cause of it, and as it turned out, they had overcharged or not given enough change back to, uh, to a customer. They had the check, but it had no address, no phone number on it. That person found that, that uh, customer and called that customer up and said, hey, we overcharged you $9, and there's a credit waiting for you the next time you come in the store. Sounds pretty simple, not surprising, you say, except this was 10.30 on a Saturday night. They were willing to take the extra step as that person was closing the store to let the customer know that the customer was important to Giant Foods. So in summary, I want to say that uh, we've come a long way. We've still got a lot to do. I'm proud of everybody in here. I'm proud of U.S. Sprint, and I'm proud of all the employees. And I'm so glad that I made the move from what I consider to be a, a staid, ordinary telephone company to U.S. Sprint. Thank you very much. And I hope you help me welcome our chief technical officer, Fred Lawrence. Good morning. I'm going to wait for Ertl to sit down and for Aiken to sit down. There is a direct relationship between the body's ability to grow hair on the head and hair on the face. You guys just don't know what it is yet. And if you tell that to Esri, it's going to be a long day before I buy your coffee. 
I, I got to tell you another thing. Some of you are going to go out and do this thing called activities. Now, I understand there's horseback riding, there's golf, there's tennis. If any of you are going to play golf, I want to warn you about Aiken and Ertl on the golf course. They always hit a 68. Always. Don't, it doesn't matter what they tell you, they will hit a 68. They will also stop at the fifth green, but they'll hit a 68. <laughs> you can't BS quality. You've either got it or you don't have it. It works or it doesn't work. The trick for departments like ours and departments like yours is to have it there every single day for every single customer, one at a time on their terms. This whole thing kind of wraps up with the notion of quality. And I, I want to leave you with four points to think about. Because 1989 is a year of quality, and it isn't a program. It, it, it isn't a slick slogan. It isn't a thing you wear on your sleeve. It's a, it's a culture. U.S. Sprint is very fortunate in that we're still in our formative years. As a matter of fact, people ask me, what is our culture? I say, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of afraid to find out. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because Sprint people don't know what they can't do, and I sure as hell ain't going to tell them. But I'm going to tell you with this quality issue, there's only one way we can look at it, and that's together, 14,000 strong, and as the customer sees it. Because how we see it doesn't matter. On teamwork, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy in the communications industry is not in this room. The enemy is not in this company. The enemy is that damn A company and that M company, and we're going to kick their socks off together. You have 14,000 brothers and sisters out there, and even though there's been some tough times where you might have thought they're on a different team, they weren't. They were facing some damn tough troubles just like you have. And the good news is we've all come through it and done something that it took that M company 22 years to do. Find black ink. Think about that. Two and a half years, 22 years. To me, that's important. On cost control. If it doesn't generate revenue, don't spend the damn money. You're going to hear a story about me going crazy one day throwing Xerox machines out of buildings because I'm on a one-man campaign to control cost. If it doesn't generate revenue, we don't need it. Now, there's a whole lot that can be said behind that. But I'm going to tell you, all these notions, you have to feel it with a passion. Financial World quoted me as being a little bit of a wild-eyed fanatic, and I'll take that criticism because I'm going to tell you something. The people of Sprint are very, very unique people. They have done what everybody said couldn't be done. And it's their whole spirit of competition that I want to close on. And I hope it's your spirit of competition. It's very bold, it's very basic, and it's very aggressive. It's attack the hill, take no survivors, shoot the wounded, and have a great 1989. Thank you. <laughs>
Try, try again. Determination. Ability, keeping our national accounts customers happy as well as the entire U.S. Sprint organization. The entrepreneuring spirit of U.S. Sprint was based on new products. It should be everyone's goal to release and develop a quality product. We all know it. We see it every day. We hear it every day. We know it. It's, it's, it's... That's it. You knew it all the time. We didn't bring you here, you brought us here to honor you.
like your trip. Gonna say to me. Welcome to Phoenix. It's very nice here. It's 75 degrees. It's 75 degrees. No. And, oh, ladies, good morning. Good afternoon. Excellent adventure. This is pick up what you're saying to me. Yeah. I think you ought to get some smokers. I really do. Okay. Lisa, do you have an extra cigarettes? Yeah. Excuse me. for the excellent adventure. <laughs> Say something, Trisha. Oh, great flight. It's wonderful to be here. All right. <laughs> Just for those who don't know, we're waiting to leave. This is a bus terminal. See, here's a bus, Southwest Charter Lines. Okay, there's Lisa Cease standing there. We're just waiting. Big bus, real big bus. No wings, no engine. Well, it's got an engine, but no, no wings. Real nice. Yes, and here's everything we say. And I have to be paying to see you. I'm racing Okay, here we come into our room. Hi, Trish. Hi. Okay, where's the wall? <laughs> Make sure I don't run into it. <gasps> there's the wet bar. Hi. There's a bar. There's wet bar? Well, wet bar. And look at all the pretty bar. things. I know, look at those. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me zoom in on you. Okay. Conditioner. Ooh. <laughs> Aloe lotion. Oh. Oh, isn't this nice? Oh. Okay. Now let's take us on a tour of the other part of the room here. Oh. Okay. Goodness. Go that way now. I gotta, I gotta quit walking into walls, Trish. You have to help me, and I'm the sober one. <laughs> I know. Okay. Oh, Here Fresh are the room. On the table. Oh, look at this. Isn't that lovely? Oh. Don't walk into the bed, Patty. Area. Oh, isn't this spectacular? Take okay. a look at that view. Let's go take a look. Oh, yeah. Don't run into the thing, Patty.
I'm tired.
Okay. That's because we brag too much. We call Sacramento too much and brag. <laughs>
the voice thing working too? Yep. When the lights go down in the city. And the lights are beautiful, Scottsdale, Arizona. How many people on this bus call the champion? How many there?
walking out through here, you turn around, it's going to start going close up. that this is a little more habitable of an area than say a mountain uh, area where you'd expect there to be more edibles and stuff like that. So over 400 edible plants here in this desert and some of them were basically staples of the people and one of the probably some of the most important of the trees, what we call trees. If you're from any other part of the country you'd probably laugh when we call them like this a tree but it suffices. But we've got a couple of the main types we have out here right here. One foot Palo Verde tree which is this one. If you understand Spanish or Italian, you can probably figure out what that means. It's green stick or green wood. And then, of course, the, the barca. It's also unique in a couple of ways. Number one, it's almost a full leaf right now. The leaves that are on it are fully mature. Okay, that's the, that's, that's the size they are. There's a reason for that. Desert area make great anchors out of it. Uh, beautiful wood, though. It's got a density that's just alive in the woods. Uh, times a year, like the Palo Verde, the Acatillo, and the other trees we have that produce edible uh, lagoon or edible leaves, drop them instantly during the drought. How do you like having them get out of here? Up? <laughs> in an area like that, it has more arms rather than the ones up on the ridge, you know, like where the water runs down through or that one, for example. There's a lot of water that comes down through there. It has a lot of arms. Maybe for water storage is why they grow on us. Also, maybe to counterbalance itself. You'll be able to hear the wind whistle through this one up here. And today's a real good day to describe them about as have. You're looking at some of these giant cactus out here. Well, in the next
get a hard, far away look in his eye. You know? <laughs> he'll do everything he's seen John Wayne and Cisco. Anybody remember Andy Devine? Showing your age. <laughs> you know, Andy Devine, he'll do it. He'll say, now, which one of them cans do I want to shoot at? There's that anxiety factor again, waving the gun back here at everybody. And I tell you what, you know, and they will. They'll say, that one, you know, and I'll shoot that one next and all this and that. Well, that bullet comes out of there 1,200 feet a second. You ain't going to hurry it by trying to throw it out of there any faster, all right? <laughs> it comes out of there way fast enough. Just keep it pointed down range, you know. Make sure your finger's in here, not out here. Because if you go to squeeze, nothing happens, and you stick your finger, you know, you're going to turn it. You're going to see what's going on. You're going to stick it in my ear, your buddy next to you, and then you're going to get beat up. All right? So don't do that.
Can you drop it when we're going? 